welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Noman Sanzu. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Hey, boo boo, they got me locked up in a cage. Take the picnic basket and live like a king. Oh, I'm sure the ranger will catch you somehow. And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. Hi, I'm just hi. <laughs> Alrighty then. So, in today's episode review, we'll be talking about Season 7, Episode Number 5, Fluttershy Leans In. In this episode, Fluttershy tries to stand up for her ideas in order to realize her dream of building an animal sanctuary. So, before we go in depth, um, I think first impressions are in order. Um, Silver, what do you think? Well, as a Fluttershy fan, I adored a good chunk of this episode because it gets to show Fluttershy being something other than scaredy cat. She is really committed to her, her dream. She really wants to see this through start to finish and she does a pretty good job. The flip side, however, is that there's not a lot of tension. I don't sense a lot of a consequence of failure in this episode. Okay. I do agree with you that there. So unfortunately that undermines sort of the tension. You want Fluttershy to succeed but you also want to feel like it's coming down to the wire, that she's really got to do something or else this will result in genuine failure. So I will say it's not the most memorable unless you're a Fluttershy fan. You're like, yes, she's doing it. Fluttershy for life. Yeah, word. Uh, but, Seppi, what about you? What do you think? As an artist who does commissions for a living, this episode infuriated me on so many <laughs> levels. Oh, wow. I have to agree with that there. Mostly for, like, the um the workers who appear in this episode. Like, they're professionals. They're the best in the industry. They don't know how a commission works, apparently. Well, um, I, I think we'll leave our full thoughts on that when we delve into the episode. But as for Bye. me... Okay, I'm good. Uh, as for me, I like this episode. This episode shows another side to Fluttershy that we don't see, which is being rageous, standing up for herself and her ideals. This is one of those episodes that have been in the making for a while now. Like, uh, how do I put this? It's like one of those episodes that we seen some progression in character. And this is one of them. But like Sappy said, the ponies who are quote unquote the professionals in their street, not listening to the client, and also the client not properly explaining what she really wants, it's infuriating. Oh no, she but... properly explained exactly what she wanted. They just thought their idea was better. I I'll I I'll have my say on that later when we jump into sit review. But anywho, um if you guys have not watched this yet I suggest that you do. Oh, by the way, audience at home, for this episode, this is going to be a special because we will also be covering issue 54 of Friendship is Magic, the comic. Because it seems that somehow that issue and this episode kind of ties in together. So, yay, who knew? Um, it's what I always wanted in the comics, um, some uh, continuity and tie-ins. So, yay. But anywho, you wanted um, continuity? Yay! <laughs> uh, I can just imagine your OC flying in the background with fireworks. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> anywho, if you guys have not watched this, uh, pause it here and go watch. And welcome back. So we start off the episode with Angel Bunny, the destructor of evil, trying to perform po uh, bunny parkour. Destructor of evil? I mean, what, what Angel Bunny are you talking about here? Oh, sorry, my bad. Like, the harboring of evil. Yes, that's what exactly. I meant. Exactly. Now, now we're truth and advertising. <laughs> yes. But anywho, we get to see Angel Bunny doing some death-defying pull, um, bunny parkour and slip and hurt his leg. Oh, poor bunny. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I have to say that, oh. Like, for him, like, that's not fun. Having a boo-boo like that, that's not fun. Oh, uh, here. Yeah. Uh, maybe I should work on my mandar. Ah-ha-ha! 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 Yep. Yeah, you really need some work. Your voice is way too deep. 
Well, I can't help I, my, my specially smooth voice. I could do it if I tried, but nah, nah. And, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and now, and now, too girly. Anyways. And now Barry White is man dark. Oh, ho, ho, baby. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, oh. oh god. Okay, no. anyways. Yes, yeah, so uh, Fluttershy wants to treat Angel, but she ran out of cash. So Fluttershy brings her to the local vet. Okay, I thought Fluttershy was the vet. <laughs> Apparently not. We always, well, I always wondered what was her relationship to the actual veterinarian in the town. And sure enough, they're best buds. Mm, true, and I, I I always thought that Fluttershy was the default vet because she's good with animals and animals were there. But no, like it seems that she's more of a caretaker. True, yeah, that makes sense. But still, talking about vets, uh, Fluttershy brings Angel to the vet, and it seems that the vet is overpopulated with animals. Oh no, lots of animals, lots and lots of animals from your. Otters to your possums to your bears to your giraffes? What? To an elephant! Your family oh. neighbor oh, wait, that's Spider-Man. The... Actually, that's in the comic, but... Yeah, true that. <laughs> so, after sorting things out... Well, they go into the vet's office and the veterinarian just says, I am overflowing. There's been some kind of influx and animals are coming, but then they don't leave. Even when they get better, they don't leave because they like to chill. It's comfy. Freeloaders! <laughs> yes, Ponyville is inf- infested with hippie animals. Uh, I could live that life. <laughs> oh, couldn't we all? But then what would we, would we be really living? Oh, oh no. But looking at the animals here, uh, goats? What? I, I, I thought goats were kind of sentient. Well, maybe there, maybe some are a bit more independent than others. It is nice to see new animals like giraffes. Oh, yeah, which I also thought were sentient too because, well, you know what? Most of the creatures here are confusing. Uh, and some are terrifying, like that loon in the background. It's just a little black duck with soulless eyes just staring out into the world saying, I will end you all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. But don't forget the return of Trash Panda. Ah, uh, yes. Wait, there's a Trash Panda in there? Yeah, I think it's in the very beginning, like playing with the um, chair. You mean the raccoons? Yeah, <laughs> what do you think I was saying? I thought there was a panda in a trash can or something like that. I was like, what, what episode uh-huh. were you watching? And meanwhile, there, there's a bear who's just toweling off in front of everyone. Oh, th- that bear is rude. Uh, well, I noticed the sloth that's uh, that's stuck behind it's like, if I had the ability to run away, I would. <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> but still, but still. So with, oh man, that, that bear's bothering me. Oh gosh. Anyway, um, with this revelation, Fluttershy decides to help the vet by building a animal sanctuary. Or you could, you know, kick them out, kick the animals out. I'm just saying. But where would they be? Oh no, they'll, in- Fest On the Ponyville. street. Yeah, then be grateful. For you heartless being you. Hi, Silverquill. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, but anywho, with that in mind, Fluttershy invites the main five and tells her, uh, tells them about her dream, which is to build an animal sanctuary near some vacant lot. And Fluttershy, sorry, uh, and Pinkie Pie, Rarity, and Applejack seems to have the right person for the job, for what Fluttershy wants. This is the funny thing. And they're like, oh, hey, this involves X. We know someone who knows Y. Let's hire them. I mean, let, let's be honest. As much as I'm going to fault the uh, the contractors, they the, uh, Fluttershy's friends don't really seem to grasp this idea themselves. True, like, true. It's saying, oh, my my friend likes writes a sports article. Surely he can write a biography about your your esteemed scientist. It's not the same thing. <laughs> well, to be honest, like some of the okay, um, let let's carry on and point out some of the flaws to their ideas when it comes to that point. So anyway, um, we have 
pony contractor guy, I forgot his name. We got Wrangler, a uh, pony herder. And we also got some interior decorator from Cantalot. Um, they're all specialized in their own field. Like the pony contractor guy crew built the Ponyville Hospital. Pony Wrangler was in a competition with Applejack to wrangle some sheep, something like that. Probably, that's how they met. And pony interior designer here was... Well, he's popular in Cantalot and Rarity recommended him. So... <laughs> I was about to say when you said she is like I know I know he's kind of effeminate, no, but really, <laughs> no, no. But anywho, with that in mind, Fluttershy invites him in and presents her idea. And this is the biggest problem. <laughs> like this triggered me. <laughs> oh, why are you triggered? Because she, because well, one, I think Fluttershy she had a really great array of stuff, but she was throwing it at them all at once. Yeah, that's the biggest problem there because when you pre- <laughs> okay, uh, okay, if someone wants to step in after what I have to say, please do because here's the thing: when you have a clutterboard of ideas but not a specific blueprint, and your concept, th- this is how disaster works. Like you remember those Sonic OCs that are online that people ask for commissions or something like that. Like this is. A problem here like that board there it says nothing it shows nothing in particular of her vision and the contractor pony is not seeing it the designer pony is not seeing it and also the wrangler pony she's not seeing it too so i can't be i can't fault all three of them but i'll fault them later on no, I'm in agreement. I think Fluttershy, she's clearly put a lot of thought into this, but she's not organizing a presentation. She's just saying, here, here's all this detail. It would be nice if she could lay it out sequentially. I mean, we start with, here are the structures we need. Here's how we're going to decorate them. Here's what the kind of animals each structure is for. But we're not, uh, it's just not going through that way. Yeah, it's something like, okay, uh, I want you guys to create my OC. He is an earth pony. He's brown. And he has brown eyes. He has brown mane and a brown tail. He has a hair. Basically make yourself chocolate milk. (laughs) See, that's the thing. Like, from that, for my description, it doesn't make sense. But everybody who watches the show knows how my OC looks like. Well, because I had a hand in it, because I drew it myself. But still, that's besides the point. Me explaining my OC to you guys sounds like, oh, dirt brown on brown on brown? You So dirty. You dirty boy. You're a dirty, <laughs> dirty boy. Uh, <laughs> but, Sebi, what do you think? Like, what, what do you have to say? Yeah, you've taken commissions from folks before. Mm-hmm. Well, usually, um, <laughs> commissions, oh boy. I need all those details, though, like, in order to fully replicate, okay, this is what I need to do, this is how I'm gonna do it. Because I'm a professional. I know how the structuring details work in my commission prices. Like, I have specific prices dedicated to whatever the commissioner wants. Because I have people come in and they say, oh, I want you to draw my OC. Well, okay. Do you want, like, flat coloring? Do you want shading? Do you want a simple, complex, or no background at all? It it can be overwhelming, but in order to fully replicate, okay, this is what I want, I need specific details. Okay, true. But how about a situation where your customer is new and you're the first artist to depict said OC? So there's no previous references. So everything that your client is describing to you is via text. For example, me. Um, his mane would be spiky brown. Coat would be uh, lighter brown than the brown on his hair. His iris would be darker brown. And he is a male pony. So technically he'd have a male structure build, but not like Big Mac, probably like Doctor Who's and so on. Then could you work something with that? And yep. would the client be happy with it? Like, that's the problem there. If the client's not happy. I have shades of brown and I can send it to him to specifically depict 
I'm not kidding. Hang no, on. Not, no, no, no. You don't have to prove anything. I know um, the troubles and hassles of commissioning. I know a few friends who done the whole thing before. Safi, I'm, I'm just curious. Do you have uh, samples of gray as well? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have 50 shades of gray? No, it's more like 48. <laughs> well, we'll work on that. We have two sets of grays. Like, there's the warm tones, there's the neutral tones, cool tones, etc. You have tones? the pony tones? <laughs> yeah! Uh, but, but anyway, so, um, Seppi, what you're saying is what Fluttershy is showing on the board here is coherent for you? Yeah. Really now? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I find it a little it's unstructured. because I've been doing this so long that I know how to convey this stuff. Because I've had people send me, like, really, really crude sketches of their OC or and whatnot, and I've been able to work with that. Hmm. Oh, interesting. All right, all right. So it's just me and Silver then. All right. Well, the the grand diversity that is Baronidum. Mm-hmm. So, anywho, um, back on track. Uh, it seems that me, Silver, and the three experts here don't know what Fluttershy wants. So, the next day, um, oh, the pony's name is Hardhead. Okay. So, the next day, uh, Fluttershy and Hardhead goes to the location and talks about how Fluttershy wants things to be done. At least, um, now we have a bit of a blueprint for Hardhead to work with, but I'm sensing the fact that Hardhead here is working in the sense of uh, this is a house. A house should have four walls, a roof, and probably a nice fireplace. And seems that he doesn't understand what Fluttershy wants and decides to do it his own way, which is a big no-no when it comes to commissioning. Yes, yeah, so he's basically saying, oh, she'll like my ideas more. Won't talk yeah, about that's it. what really peeps me off about this episode. <sighs> I am infuriated. True that. And remember what I said before about um, this guy has uh, has faults, but not yet. Yeah, okay, we start off with hard hat. He, he doesn't listen to what the client wants. And the client wants something very incoherent, which is, well, uh, when, once it's done, it makes a lot of sense. But in picture form, it's hard to even imagine so, yeah, Hardhead here is not a really good listener. So, <laughs> um, we skip on ahead to Dandy Grandeur, uh, uh, the pony designer, and he shows cloth fabrics to Fluttershy saying, oh, this is the in color now, this is the trend, and so on. But, uh, Fluttershy wants, um, green with brown accents, or was it? Brown with green accents on pillow covers or so on. Well, e- either way, I don't think animals are concerned with the latest fashion. They're going to poo on it. You, let's just, let's be honest. They're gonna, there's going to be a lot of poo involved. True, true. Yeah. Unless they're from Zootopia. At which point you would say, stop lounging around the veterinarian's place and get a job, you bum. <laughs> That's so true. Oh, wait, wrong. There actually are 50 shades of gray in that thing that I have. <laughs> I miscounted. Well, oh, there you go. There you go. I, ho- I hope it's a more entertaining than the other Fifty Shades. Oh, wow. But anywho, after that brief interview with Dandy, Dandy says, like, you don't know what you're thinking, let me show you what you don't know. And we off to go see Wrangler. Wrangler here is one of AJ's buddies, and... She brings in a lot of cages and a bit of baskets, but a lot of cages. Now, I will and I will say I sympathize with Wrangler that Fluttershy's like, oh, I want this to be like a warm hug. Who on earth is going to be able to follow those instructions? Okay, that, yeah. Okay, so, I, so when people come into this house, I want to feel like they've been punched in the gut. <laughs> So, wait, should I set up the paint bucket a bit higher or lower? Uh, you see, the paint's got to trigger the olfactory senses to create a st- uh, uh, upset in the stomach. So I want you to move it two degrees to the left. And, you know, just make it like uh, 
an, an episode of Montezuma's Revenge. Or, or well, how about this, Marv? We we booby tripped the house. Buddy, crazy? No, no, no. You just, just tie, just set up a time bomb. There you go. <laughs> ah. Yeah. So yeah, oh, poor Wrangler here. It, uh, it's clear that Wrangler is not the right pony for the job for this one, but still, she'll try her best. And with that, everybody comes to the spot and asks all Fluttershy for her opinion. And Fluttershy hates it. Okay, here's the point where I find it infuriating because now Fluttershy has points to point out. Like, um, okay, she says, this is not going to work at all. A giraffe can't fit through that door with the curtains blocking the light. How are birds going to... To uh, gonna sing in the sunshine and a lot of things that now she tends to know what she wants and what like now you know what you want what happened to what but I threw down mattresses you wanted a hug for him right <laughs> oh gosh this is uh no 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 with that the client is per se always right and if the client's not happy then she has the right to decline said service and let them all go now he, here's my question how is Fluttershy going to pay for all this I don't know maybe Princess Celestia's uh, forwarding the bill it's just like it, I, we've never really known what Fluttershy does for a financial career <laughs> I, I would say vet it's beforehand it's volunteer work but we have a vet in Ponyville. That's, that's, this whole thing is devoted to helping said vet in Ponyville. Yeah, so this is the thing. Like, before the vet appeared, I would say the a vet, but no, we have a real vet. So, yeah, you know what? I, I'm not even sure anymore. But still, but still. Uh, well, well, I've always, I've always had a theory. It's animals. See, I've always had the theory that her animals serve as a spy network. <laughs> and she's like blackmailing 10 different ponies. I think you mentioned that one before. Yes, I, it makes more and more sense every day. <laughs> now, my uh, little birds, bring me your secrets. <laughs> oh, wow. So, but anywho, getting back on track, after Fluttershy fires everyone, the vet came to check on Fluttershy. And it seems that she brought along the whole gang and yeah, everybody's creating a ruckus. They're destroying the whole location. And so that's why I said. Although th this kind of feels forced. I mean, why would you bring the entire animals before you knew it was ready? They, well, they're basically there to cause the disaster that says this is wrong. Even after Fluttershy has said this is wrong. <laughs> yeah, but I think this is just to um, put the a pin on it to show the point or something like that well yeah it is it is funny that fluttershy is prophetic in exactly what happens True. it's almost like she read the script <laughs> well, yes indeed uh but anywho um later that night fluttershy tucks in the animals and promised them that she will not give up and try harder for the next time let's put a pin on this here so we can remember later on but the next morning, Fluttershy invites the main five back again and tells them about what she wants and saying that the professionals that you guys recommended were not the ponies that I needed. So let's start from scratch and do things my way. And I also invited this one guy from season five. So he'll be a welcome cameo. He's got a hat. I know. And Seppi's related to him? Wait, who am I related to? It, Big Daddy McColt of the inbred McColts. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's not challenging the inbred status. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, God, no. Not, wait, what? I'm, I'm not awake. All, all I can say is that, like, I don't know, my family, I forget how... Actually, my dad forgot how, but he's always been told that we were somehow related to, like, the uh, McCoys. 
and they huh. actually used to fight in the area that like my great grandmother or something like grew up in like at uh West Virginia. So yeah, mm. fun fact, I might be related to a McCoy, which is in turn I'm related to the McColts. <laughs> Yay. You tell us you're the real McCoy? <laughs> sure, why not? Oh boys. But anywho, uh with Big Daddy McCoy here uh sorry, McCult here <laughs> We start on building Fluttershy Sanctuary. And everything seems to be going smoothly. Everything's going to working fine. Why not do this from the start? Ay. Well, that's sort of the thing. Now, one of the things that works against this, like I, I said earlier, there's no, there's no deadline. It's like, it doesn't go right the first time. Well, that's okay. We'll just start again. I mean, it requires a little bit of determination just to dust yourself off and try again. But I wonder how much more would this be if Fluttershy had X amount of time before the the land got sold off to someone else. You could have um you could have Filthy Rich saying, I'm sorry, but they I've got a bid on this lot. If you can't if you can't provide uh something tangible by X date, I'm selling it off to a big to make a big mall or something. True, but that would make um, filthy, mean, and the bad guy here. But well, still, well, not necessarily a bad guy. It's just he's got competing bids, and he is a businessman. This isn't like the Equestria Girls, where he's saying, "Ah ha ha, I'm gonna close down the camp because I want to." Ha 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 ha. Ah ha ha. Ah ha ha. Ah ha ha ha. Yeah, there, just like that. <laughs> uh, oh well. But uh, it's just like okay. Really, they've lost nothing. They're not. They're not uh, facing failure at any time. There's got to be a hook of some sort to make us think that Fluttershy's really thrown her all into this. Like, I think the real message for this episode is the fact that to boil it down to its very essential is like suited for success. I think the writers wanted to emulate that kind of feeling towards uh, to the audience like how suited for success was but suited for success featured rarity undergoing uh humiliation and feeling like, like she'd blown a chance to make it big in the fashion world not to mention you saw the doom looming uh more she tried to please everyone this one you don't really you sense that everyone's doing it wrong but it's not fluttershy who's making the mistake it's just everyone else as soon as they're gone everything goes smoothly which, honestly, if anyone's having a crisis of career, it might be them. For if word gets out about this, uh, true. But yeah, the, the, that's the thing there because from my point of view, I think that it felt like this was trying to really suited for success, but it didn't pan that way. But at the same time, too, it's trying to be its own thing, which I can respect that. But mm, it, it feels off somehow you know what i mean well i do like that fluttershy was not a doormat to the various experts she tried to convey it they didn't get it so she's like nope sorry you are the weakest link goodbye <laughs> but still still uh i'm not 100 sure like i do enjoy this episode highly and okay um do you guys want to say anything more on this uh ending or epilogue here before we go into our final thoughts no, it's it's sort of straightforward. It's like, okay, experts fail, bring in your friends, and apparently your friends are better than experts. Uh, yeah, because they listen to you. Sorry, what? Because... <laughs> oh, you. Uh... <laughs> Seppi, anything to add? No, I'm good. All righty then. So let's go to final thoughts. So, um, Silver, what do you think? Well, like I say, I... I... I love Fluttershy as a character. I love that she has uh, grown so much, has taken on more. And here's an episode where she doesn't have to be uh, afraid or downtrodden to be an effective character. She knows what she wants and she's pursuing it. The problem is that there's very little tension throughout this. And I think there was a way to actually uh, amend that. Although it would require Fluttershy to be have just a moment of doubt. Instead of making these uh, experts less competent or, or so selfish that they, they don't even heed their client, 
What if they're so proficient, they point out things Fluttershy never imagined, and suddenly the dream she had is more complex than she thought it would be. And it'd be okay for her to feel a little uncertain and tempted to maybe give up, because is this more than I can handle? But no, she finds the courage to move forward and tackle each thing in phases until she creates something that is even better than what she envisioned. That changes the whole dynamic. Hmm, all right, all right. And Tepi? This episode, pretty much the same thing as I've said before. I mean, it's an okay episode. It's forgettable for, for me in my eyes. But it's so infuriating as an artist. Just friggin' commissions. And, and the quote-unquote professionals can't even hold their own. Free! <laughs> I'm good. Uh... All right, then. Just a little respect. Just a little bit. And as for me, uh, this episode here is, I like this episode. I like the themes for it, but the professionals, Fluttershy here, eh, they infuriate me with Fluttershy's description of how she wants things to do and the professionals not listening because to do something like this, both party needs to listen to one another. Both party needs to explain things properly and convey what they want because we all are expert in our own field. But when it comes to what the client wants, that's not going to happen if you don't listen. So for Fluttershy's case, you really need to have a proper description of how things should be done. And for the professionals to listen and understand what the client wants. And we got none of that in this episode. And well, it's a good thing that in the end, uh, we did got another expert on the job to finish the job for them. Big Daddy McCult. So that's good. So, yay. Why didn't Twilight think of him? I know. <laughs> and why didn't Fluttershy think of him first? And honestly, when Fluttershy talked about expert calling in help, I thought it was Discord for some reason. <laughs> oh, oh, I can only imagine what his, his creation would be like. Oh, yeah, true, but still. Uh, but this is not the end. Like we mentioned before, uh, we are going to touch upon uh, issue 54. So, Seppi, you, can you join us for this one? Nope. <laughs> All righty then. So, anywho, um, have a good day, Seppi. Um have fun training uh, puppies. Yes, I will. Then get a little rest. Hello, you see. Farewell, lasitas, and good night. I didn't really study the lyrics. I just wanted to do that. <laughs> you've got you've got the core of it. Yay! All right, you then take care. Bye bye. Was... See ya. Bye bye. See ya. Bye bye. And let's continue on with uh, My Little Pony. Issue 54. So, like we mentioned previously before, this correlates to the episode. Um, Silver, you want to take this one? Well, we find out what was Angel doing during this whole uh, event. I mean, we saw him cursing out certain animals as they intruded upon his space in his hizé. <laughs> but he was recovering, and there's the question of what happened to all the animals as they were working through this rather embarrassing debacle. Well, we find out, thanks to a tie-in issue from the comics, uh, written by, uh, drawn rather, by Jay Foskett. And I'm trying to remember who was the written writer. by Rob Anderson. Rob Anderson. Yeah, this is a very, very short and simple comic, because at first, Angel is trying to lay down the law. The bunny with no eyes. And, of course, the animals don't listen, because why would you? Yeah, it's Angel. Why would you? <laughs> You've got to have authority. And so Angel is trying so hard to just force this, and it's just not working. So he decides to recruit the Cutie Mark Crusaders, who made an appearance in the episode helping out, as mm -hmm. did Starlight, which I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that Starlight was working with the team. Yeah, that bit of cameo. Oh, by the way, Angel was in that um, scene near the end of the episode too. But still, um, that's beside the point. Um, I, I think this happened right before 
the night ended. So, uh, remember that pinpoint I mentioned to pin on? Yeah, that's before that because it seems that that's the perfect timeline where Flutterschei was meeting with the experts and whatnot. Yes. Here's the thing, though. Angel really, really wants to make this work. He is actually driven by guilt of the, at the idea of letting Fluttershy down. This is Angel we're talking about. He and guilt are about as far apart as the sun and moon. Well, you have to remember, um, Fluttershy does give him the belly rubs and the uh, fluff tails, whatever it is that Fluttershy does to Angel. Um, he enjoys it. And letting Fluttershy down, that's not a good feeling. It isn't, but we don't get to see him express this very often. This is a unique presentation for him. True, but it's not unwarranted. So Angel recruits both the pets and the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Mm -hmm. And it seems the way that uh, to get every pet to listen to them is to, well, um, long story short, do what Fluttershy does to Angel because... That's one way to get every bo every animal to listen. <laughs> All will serve. Also, I find it funny, Fluttershy in this year uh, issue, her, the snake Rupert, who was such a good waiter uh, while she was talking to the experts, Rupert is just giving Angel the are you kidding me look as he tries to I, cover up. I know, Rupert here is my favorite pet. Like, Fluttershy should have... <laughs> Fluttershy should ditch Angel and take Rupert on. Like, Rupert's much a better pet. Yeah, like, Rupert's got it for your job, Angel. And you know what? Snakes snakes and bunnies. They don't I'm just mix. saying. Yep, they don't I'm just mix. saying. He's, he's gunning for, for a cushy spot and a free lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, we travel forward a bit. Uh, Fluttershy comes back home to see the animals uh, behaving properly. And, yeah, thanks to the CMCs and the pets, um, they all did a good job. Angel Bunny here is happy with the results and Fluttershy wants Angel to do this tomorrow because the sanctuary is not done yet. Of course, perhaps the most unlikely thing is that Sweetie Belle manages to tame Opal, the the kitty that took a swipe at her mane. Yeah, but still, with uh, hugs, like, come on, like, who can deny pony hugs? Uh, it is impossible. She'll have to just hug Opal all the harder because we, the audience, will never know what that feels like. Oh, nah. yeah. 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 And with that, um, after realizing that uh, Angel Buddy needs to do this tomorrow, uh, comic ends. Comic end. So what do you think of this tie-in? Like, is it a good add-on? It's a good idea in that it shows a different side to Angel, and it also demonstrates why the Crusaders would be involved in the Sanctuary's construction. Unfortunately... One, it's it's competing against the memory of I think it was friends for uh, My Little Pony issue twenty five, where it was it was the pet save Ponyville. Uh, okay, um, I think I remember that one. Was this the one where? Oh wait, pet save Ponyville. Oh yeah, 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 that one, that really strange one. Yes, I remember that one. <laughs> it was well, it was a fun one, but unfortunately, that one featured a lot of visuals. Jay Foskett works with a very minimalist approach. In fact, one of the biggest criticisms that was voiced about this comic is that the same bundle of animals, an elephant and a giraffe and sloths and chipmunks and ducks and all that, it's repeated across several panels on one page in the same pose. Oh, yep, I do see that. There's also a lot of panels that don't feature a background or a lot of uh, visual context. As a result... Angel's thought bubbles aren't quite the same as they would be in earlier issues. There's less to give the reader context, so you're bringing word bubbles uh, or out-and-out -out stop signs just to get the idea across. And that takes some of the, the fun and interactivity away. It's a fun comic, but unfortunately, I think this is one of those times where the artwork really needed to convey a lot more. And... While I enjoy Foskett's style for orga the organic curve and the fluid energy, he's not big on background details. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I think most of the 
problems or most of the complaints fans have with Chief Force Git is um, the minimalistic backgrounds that he always does in his artwork and also the pony and their poses. Like, I think that's the biggest complaint that fans have with um, Fosgate's style. And I've always mentioned before that with Fosgate's art, it's a matter of taste and preferences. Like, for me, I've gotten used to it where I can enjoy his art because it's that style. And some people don't. I understand it's not for everyone. But here's one of the points or here's one of the faults for his art in this issue that shows most of the ponies here are on their hind hoofs most of the time which is well kind of his style but once done too much can be rather jarring especially when they're just standing usually the ponies are moving which you know there's that enjoyable energy well, like I mentioned before, it's his style, it's his way of doing art, but done too much is not good. Because I'm remembering the Celestia and Pinkie Pie special, or the Friends Forever that he did. True that Celestia's proportion were a bit out there, but it's one of those things where, hey, um, certain scenes need to have this kind of imagery here and there. But for this one, it's a bit too out there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but still, but still, it's it's a nice add-on. Um, nothing much to say about it. It's interesting point of view to have. And I wish they do more of this in the future. Well, I do like these tie-ins. In fact, we're, we're coming up on some humdingers of tie-ins. Oh, the things we'll have to say about the next comic arc. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oof, wings that's over Yak Yakistan. That one. I was thinking about the other one, about the books. Like, I think um, the artist mentioned something is tied into season seven, but I haven't seen anything of it yet. Not yet, but yeah. but soon. Yes, yeah, true, true. But anywho, so if you guys at home uh, would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. And with every support, you get full access to deleted content and early access to to the review show, which is this. Um, and also a huge thank you from us. And I'd like to thank Lurker, Cat, Twilight Genesis, Nimtrocotorius, Starstream, Master of Light, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And anywho, uh, Silver, what's we going to do next week? Well, let's see here. Having had a good time to talk about uh, cartoons and a comic, we're going to follow up on a comic and the continuing, the continuing trek of Friends Forever as we approach the inevitable issue 38. But first, we're going to talk issue 34, starring Pinkie Pie and Cheese Sandwich as they deal with a wayward party house. Oh, this is a fun one. This is a fun one. And also, by the way, I have to mention that uh, Master of Lag kindly sponsored us to finish the whole Friends Forever arc. So thank you, man. Dankeschön. So anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Verquil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. So how do you like to cook your bunny? Oh, with the papa beans. And a nice Chianti. <laughs> <laughs>